It's uh, time for Action Figure Spotlight, Brian. I never told you about this, but if you've got a figure that you'd like to discuss or kind of showcase a little bit of show and tell, we kind of end the show every time with that. Jay, do you have a figure ready? Uh, I prepped Brian for that, so I think he's got something. I, I let him know. Oh, you're having that. cheater conversations, huh? I get it. Yeah, okay. yes. Um, so I was going to bring Brian in your honor. I didn't, but I was going to bring Stalker because I know he's one of your favorite from the uh, G.I. Joe 26 uh, comic 26 pack. I didn't bring him though. I thought I would switch it up a bit. And uh, Rob's going to love this one here. So I found this guy actually. Ah, oh, wicked. So this is the uh, Masters of the Universe Origins She Ra. And She Ra is my favorite character in the He Man line. And I can't believe I actually found her. And Rob's going to say, well, why don't you open her? Well, I'm not opening She Ra, but we can look at her through the bubble. Okay. Okay, okay. You're you arguing through the not opening. Yeah, look you're at her. She's so opening. awesome. <laughs> you said you were not going to open the classics one in Swift Win in the door because you spent so much dollars on it. That was hey. fifteen bucks. You're going to find another one. If I'm you, not going to open. Are you going to? I, I have a nice carded Shira collection, and I think I'm going to keep it that way. That's it. Whoopsie do. That's the end of it. Whoopsie do. Brian, I'll let you go next. What you got? Okay. Uh, let's see that. What's the dolly you've got that you've pulled from your shelf? Okay, so 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 you like Ninja Force, do you? <laughs> I um, do. Uh, allow me to introduce you to oh, yeah. uh, the uh, Ninja Force Red Ninja. This is my favorite. Uh, the the Red Ninja. <laughs> That's what he's called. It says so on the file card. Um, this extremely red ninja, yeah, uh, is uh, he's got many colors, including kind of an orangey pink color and a and a blue and some black. So he's got lots of colors. I can't think of any colors that he doesn't have. Um, <laughs> right. So that, that's my show and tell. Is, um, is is this is your Ninja Force nineteen ninety three red? I say red ninja. <laughs> Maybe that's just like a clever name, you know, when they call big guys tiny and he's like <laughs> ninja because he's like not like that. You know, it would have been a no brainer just to do version one of Storm Shadow and make him red. And it would have looked exactly like Red Ninja. But yes. Or just they, like, they use dice for some reason. Like <laughs> I, I don't understand why. Jay, since the boiler room has gone behind me, which I'm surprised you haven't you didn't remark at the intro, but Freddie's boiler room has disappeared. Uh, my pile has kind of shrunk that I have over here. Okay. So I've only got two figures over here, so you got to pick one or two. Let's go with number two. Number two. All right. So this is a San Diego Comic Con international exclusive because I'm a big exclusive hero. And this is from the 2002 uh, Masters of the Universe line. And this is Keldor. So at least Keldor uh, for the line before. I'm trying to get that glare right. Kid of a there you go. There you go. Perfect. Um, and so this was the Comic Con exclusive. What's really cool about him is he comes with the vial of acid over here in his hand and the alternate head. So there's the Skeletor head there, and then over here you have like a half fire head, um, kind of getting burned and whatnot. But this is the first Keldor figure that they ever released. Um, everybody that's listening, if you don't know, Keldor is uh, who Skeletor was before he was Skeletor. So. You can kind of see that change and you can see how the classics figure took inspiration from it, obviously as well. Uh, but this was a figure that when I first saw, I was like, Oh man, how come this cannot be a retail? How come I'm going to, I mean, ugh, I didn't even want to venture on eBay, but I got lucky on a claim sale on uh, Facebook that I was able to get this. So Havoc staff, his double sword that falls apart or comes apart into the vial. Cool figure. Again, all those 2002 He-Man uh, exclusive characters are awesome. Shira, Faker, Keldor, just just good, good, good stuff. <laughs> well, you said yours is really good, right? <laughs> well, okay. so let's end on yours then. Sure, yeah. yours. it's a good story. Um, I'm trying to see. I I did get some mail here. Um, there's there's stuff that I haven't opened up, and there's uh, I've got three things. So pick a number one, two, three. Number three. Yeah. Three. Okay. So this uh, big surprise, Super Seven uh, Club Gray Skull. This is one that was waiting to get checked off. This was up there when I got Hordak. So remember, 
uh, when I went to PowerCon and I got Hordak. You're like, you did that just to piss me off. Yeah, this was you did. <laughs> no, I didn't. I right. wanted it because no. you know I'm no, the He Man guy. Oh, no, you did. Said at the beginning of the show. <laughs> Anyways, this was uh, the other figure. This one, Tila, which I got uh, when we were filming for Action Figure Adventure. All the cutaways. Uh, this was the like the third of those figures where it was like must have Club Grayskull because it was the best version of that figure that has ever been released. So it is Man at Arms. Whoa! Um, Whoa! He's just perfect, man. He's absolutely perfect in every way for that figure. Um, yeah, he's do great. like a close up, and I apologize for the glare. But he's he's just he's just incredible, and you know it's the same old kind of cartoon stuff on the back. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, it's just it's just awesome. He comes with his mace. He comes with the two handed uh, blaster. It's down here. You can see. Um, it's just fantastic, and a figure that's very hard to find, and kind of getting expensive that first wave one and wave two of, of club gray skull it's getting up there so yeah, i'm, I'm glad to, to add this to the collection that's I, wicked, man. With Tila. I think i only have she-ra and shadow weaver i think from that set um, you didn't get a, a he-man or a prince adam or i don't have a he-man at all oh no i have uh the movie of rubble leader he man yeah and i have prince adam and sky sled i want to have power Arm he man never mind from origins but yeah i know i don't have a he man from the silver seven line or from uh classics i don't like the he man from the classics i don't like the way he looks his face doesn't do it for me i like the uh super seven one but the, yeah. the club gray skull one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um all right Let's get to your ultimate funny figure story. Go and tell. What you got to you got to lead me up to it. I want to hear it. This is going to be probably about a four minute story, and it will be okay. worth it. I promise. So, the latest wave of Star Wars: The Black Series has been released in Canada. It's been in the states for maybe a month, and it is every figure is a must have for me. It's pretty much all Mandalorian. So you have Quill, Grief Karga, uh, Moff Gideon, uh, the Armorer, and Dark Ray from The Rise of Skywalker. Every figure I have to have in that. They're all brand new. All the first time they've been shown. Sure. So I go and I hunt. And I actually did go out and hunt. And I found them all, except Moff Gideon, of course. The one that uh, pretty much everyone wants from that wave. I couldn't find Gideon. So I got desperate. I went on eBay. Oh, no. I went no, on eBay. Uh, Moff Gideon is brand new. Isn't he a big bad toy store? Yeah, but I'm, he's on pre order because he, he's sold out. That whole wave is sold out already. That whole right, but he's on pre order from, from Big Bad so that you can, you don't have to. Yeah. Pay yeah. And, and I mean, I love Big Bad, but for one black series, that's, you know, that's a lot. Well, you That's wait till you get other stuff. It can it can stay in your pile of loot for up to six months. Yeah, for sure. Um, All right, here it comes. So I go on eBay and Moff Gideon for the Black Series is already $80, $70, 80 dollars. He's a great character. And Moff Gideon is awesome, but he also comes with oh. he also comes with the dark saber, right? So you know what? You know what? <laughs> I like tempting fate. So I go on uh, my old my old friend. I, I go on the old friend site, which is Amazon.ca. My old pals they oh, treat us they treat no. us they treat us collectors so great. Uh, if anyone hasn't seen my Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker trilogy vi of videos, check out my YouTube channel at JBartlett to see this saga. But I tempted fate again. I found Moff Gideon. Why? I found Why would you do Gideon this on? Amazon.ca, which is the Canadian Amazon, the six inch black series, and boom, arrives in one day. So, and it was 50 something dollars. And you know what? I'm like, I'm doing it. I want this figure. I want to review this figure. And he came today. Would you like to see my Moff Gideon six inch black series figure? 
I'm sure it's like IG 12 or 11 or whatever it is. It's not Moff Gideon. Oh, it's, wow. It's the vintage, vintage collection, the 3.75 Moff Gideon. And I opened the box and you should see my face because I'm kind of happy, but disappointed at the same time. <laughs> I, re I really wish you'd been there to record my face because it was um, exciting and yet disappointing because I overpaid for this. And my point is, once again, Amazon sent me the wrong figure. I'd ordered the six inch Black Series Moff Gideon and I got the vintage collection four inch Moff Gideon. Now, is that a hard figure to find as well? The wave just came out. Um, I'm assuming this character in general is going to be one of the ones that go up in value just because he's so wicked. Right. I mean, so I'm going to get this anyway, but I definitely overpaid for it. But more importantly, I didn't order this. <laughs> it wasn't as bad as no. your. You got the clone trooper <laughs> instead yeah. of Luke, right? But An I mean, open clone trooper, too, at that. I ordered the Black Series. And as you can see, that is it, not the it, Black oh, Series. So good. Are you sending it back? Probably not. For probably, 50 bucks? Probably not. Well, so you have like, it's something crazy like with Amazon. They're really good with the return policy. I think it's like two months. So I'm going to yeah, sit, I'm going to sit on it and see if I come across him, you know, for the know. regular $20. You'll, you'll, you'll find it on Amazon. You'll order it and you'll get like, like, I don't know, baby Yoda or something. I, I they, this guy came secure in bubble wrap. There's the back Whoa. of the other characters in the wave. Um, so he came secured in bubble wrap and there's only a little crease. It's nothing like the saga of Luke. You can't really see it. So the, the figures are in pretty good shape. So I'll take that. Oh, uh, that crease is horrible. I can totally see it. That's disgusting. That's like right a right here. behind you. Oh, that. <laughs> oh, shut up. oh. Yeah. Don't put that in your collection. Never put a crease on your shelf. Yeah. So this guy is going to go on that wall to fill in. I can't do this on that white space, right? I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. So anyway, guys, Amazon.ca, if you are a gambler, it is fun. I'm starting to have a really good time with this now because you order something. Rob's ordered stuff. Yeah. You don't Action know. Figure roulette. You don't know the condition and you don't know if you're even going to get the same figure. Moff Gideon. There you go. Quack. <laughs> well, <clears throat> the saga continues with Amazon. I like that uh, running storyline. That's yeah. a good one. Um, we usually do an action figure spotlight to, to end the show. And I don't know if you have any figures around that you want to pull and maybe talk about, or you can just suffer through for what Jay and I are going to showcase. Jay, do you have a figure ready to talk about? I, I do. I have two and I'll make it, I'll make it quick here. Um, again, our buddies at Hasbro. These are transformers that I've been waiting for since 1986. Uh, the first two in the wave. So from transformers, the movie, we have Blur and Jazz. Ah, oh, and these are actually they're branded uh, '86 from the 1986 animated film that is one of my favorite films of all time. Um, I'm waiting for Hot Rod and Cup, but these are the first two that I got, and they're exactly the scale with War for Cybertron too. So, oh man, just look at uh, Blur; looks insane. That's so, awesome. I, there's these, a cyclone. There's open, yeah, there, there's wicked. There's Scourge, uh, Grimlock with Wheelie, and then Cup and Hot Rod. So that, awesome. that is awesome. Are you a Transformers fan of the '86 movie, Eric? Um, I, I am a, tra I'm a Transformers fan. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I am more of a Transformers fan of the toys than the show. I would say, uh, I mean, although I've watched every episode of the show and love the show, um, the the toys just there was like a magic to those toys, and that is where my, you know, my love for Transformers is. That's why I am um, I'm a big masterpiece Transformer collector, um, especially the the earlier stuff where there was still a lot of chrome on it and the you know the the rubber tires and uh, clear windshields and. I just, uh, yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, I'm a, I am a Transformers fan in general, though. 
Cool. Uh, and I apologize for putting you on the spot about a figure. Do you have one with you that you can talk about? Yeah, I got it. I've got a couple here on my desk. Um, <laughs> yes. Kind, what do you got? Like com- two from two from completely different corners of the of the toy universe here. So I've got uh, my classic Spider Man figure that was on the the retro card uh, from from Marvel Legends. Sweet. I'm going in the wrong direction here. Uh, yeah. I love this figure. Um, I, I'm a huge Spider Man fan. And I am particularly a huge uh, fan of Spider-Man, the way that he looked when when I was growing up. Um, and so I'm not as into the hyper skinny, giant eyed, big head Spider-Man. I, I like to look for years. I've wanted one with that more classic oval head, the, you know, the, that particular shape of eyes and like a little bit of a, a fuller build. Um so when this figure came out, like I, I just, I was waiting for this forever. So really happy with that one. Um, and this com- on a completely uh, different uh, page here, uh, this is a Delphi figure from O'Neill designs uh, Glios line, uh, which, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, um, but Glios is uh it's a line by uh, a guy named matt dowdy who he's another independent toy uh creator uh he up in massachusetts and uh like very uh creative kindred spirit and uh he just has this wealth of knowledge about well everything but, but sci-fi in general it's a very it's a sci-fi toy line and uh, they're very, they're small. They're little like pocket sized figures that completely pull apart. Um, all the, everything can reconfigure. And so it's almost like a Lego for action figures where you can build all these crazy creations uh, with these little figures. And uh, he's been going for over a decade now. And uh, just the, the nicest guy you want to meet. I don't know how he stays in business because he gives more toys away i think than he sells um but just like he's a mad genius though and i and there's just like a like kind of this uh just like love of toys that it just shines through these figures um and so yeah i i i really enjoy just ha- having that these little figures they're all over my studio and they're fun to just they're like hand candy you know, you just pick them up and pop them apart and play with them and stuff. So, like I said, two very different toys, but you know, they're always sitting on my desk uh, as I'm as I'm here working. Yeah, uh, cool. Usually, I, I usually make Jay pick from a, a number of figures that I have in piles over here. But I, I went to the collection to to grab a figure specifically a line, but one my favorite one from the line because I don't know if you guys did it. You may have done it. You may have not done it because I've been talking about that discovery after the fact. And for me, it's uh, Egon Spangler from the real Ghostbusters. It's Diamond Select came out, I think, three or four years ago. And I'm really uh, hot and cold on Ghostbuster figures. They're uh, they're either not quite there on on the movie version and the animated ones really haven't been that well. But when Diamond Select came out with the seven inch scale, it it felt like bang on for the first time of of Ghostbusters. So I, I hate to put you on the spot, Eric. Did you have anything to do with this? No, no, we didn't. Oh, okay. Well, I do apparently like figures that aren't created by you guys. So that's, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I just, I just think it's a cool figure. And uh, the downside is they, they don't stand up well. They, they all come with bases. And Jay and I were filming with action figures. Jay, I mean, you tell that story because I had to walk away. I was so frustrated. Yeah, I was, to- I was the guy that gets to pose all the figures for the shoots. Um, and those diamond slut guys, yeah. And um, we broke a bunch of the proton beams when we took oh, them out. Yeah. The box. They're so flimsy, the actual beam. Yeah, uh, it's hard to see from where you guys are, and it'll be out of focus if I push it closer to the camera. But there's like a a kink here. It's like a ninety degree kink on this. T- it's an actual tube. It's not just solid plastic. So they're not like flawless, but the look and the aesthetics are, are great. I mean, they've spent a lot of time uh, detailing the, the the folds on the coveralls and. You know, it's, they're cool figures, but they're not, uh, it just fell over trying to stand. 
for example. So it is what it is. So I guess of all the flaws that I'm throwing out there, clearly you guys didn't have anything to do with that. Um, well, there yeah. has to be a few figures out there that we didn't work on. Uh, that'll bring us to the action figure spotlight uh, of the week. Jay, do you have figures with you? Is it one? Do I have to pick a number? How is this working this week? I have a bunch, but I have one. Um, uh, we already talked about it, but I still want to, I definitely want to show it off. Um, so it's, it's a vehicle set that I had. I, I purchased a big Kenner mask lot in 2001 and I got this particular vehicle that I never had, but it was incomplete. Uh, the mask stuff is notoriously hard to complete because there's just a ton of things that can go wrong and fall apart. And our good buddy, <laughs> Chris at Treehouse Collectibles in Toronto, uh, man, that, that store is rapidly becoming my favorite because he has such pristine stuff. He's like, hey, Jay, I got, uh, I got a rhino for you. And I'm like, okay, let's see it. So I'm going to show you I, an a, absolute 10 out of 10 mint condition rhino. Like it is literally Ooh, flawless. The, the, the chrome is perfect. Everything is perfect. All the tires. That's not the best part, though. So I got to complete my Rhino. Which for I'm Mask, for off. everybody listening that from can't mask. see, might not remember for Mask. And this is the best part, is that the artwork, I actually might get this box graded because it is so perfect. Wow. So there's the actual box from Rhino. And, uh, yeah, again, anyone who knows me and knows Rob knows our uh, love for the Mask line and how just incredible that, that toy line was in general. So... I'm happy to finally have a complete hint <laughs> rhino. So thanks, Chris. Trios collectibles. That's awesome. I'm going to go next because I'm sure, Chris, you've got something crazy to show us by collecting oh. standards. You, I, I haven't, you, I haven't you pulled it. anything out, but I can. Okay, pull something out while I talk for the next minute or so, and that'll buy you some time, okay? Okay. So my, my figure of the week uh, has a story connected to action figure adventure. And... When we visited Mondo, um, I got to see a, a bunch of their six scale stuff. And I had never seen in person the turtles that they had done. And on screen, we basically focused on Mikey. But when I got back, I had to get them all because, well, we talked about them. So I had to show them now as, as cutaways. So uh, I'm going to basically showcase Donatello uh, oh, from, from Mondo. What's great about these is that they color match the skin to the Playmates figures. Uh, they come with interchangeable heads, so you can do the red bandanas if you want. And they come with the turtle tails here, which are also removable because in the Mirage comics they had uh, <laughs> So it, it's a good mashup between the Mirage stuff and the Playmates stuff. And they all just look super cool. As much as they, they kind of look similar because they're four turtles, they each have a distinct personality to them. And uh, it was hard figuring out which one I wanted to, you know, pick to show you guys. But Donatello, the, the look on his face, just, I don't know, I'm just old. He just looks ready for action. Uh, it's a cool figure and they're fun to pose. They got a great base. It's, it's just awesome. And I had to pick something TMNT. Of course. The, uh, the, the comic book stuff, man, is, is the best. I think that's, uh, you know, that the iconic uh, TMNT <laughs> painting that's on the Ultra game for the NES. Oh. I love how they all have the same colored bands. And I love that the first, I would love to get uh NECA put out a set a couple of years ago like that with the four turtles from the comic, but they were colored and they all had the red bands. And But those Mondo ones are just killer dude. Right on. Yeah. I, I love them. So we've given Chris some time now. You heard his headphones coming off and on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It's Hey, we're live, Chris. This is how yeah. we do it. Expect the unexpected. I can't wait to see what you're going to showcase for us. The case behind you has been opened. Yes, it has what been opened. Uh oh. What, ha what has made its way to the stage? The okay. Four so I picked, and people ask me a lot, what is like the number one Ninja Turtle figure you have? That, like, if you, if you end up, you know, if you were going to sell everything off, what would be the one you would keep, you know, if everything else was gone? And I picked this one. Um, a, I like the aesthetics a lot. It was in that very first lot that I found. So it feels to me like the start of my journey on the turtles as well. But that one is this guy. Whoa. The wizard splinter. Oh, man. So, I mean, the, it, the, the sculpt is just so dynamic with the beard. Sort of, I'm trying to get in front of the camera here. 
with yep. the beard, you know, kind of flowing wow. and you can see his, the robes kind of flowing and, and this is a hard copy. So you can see it's, it's pinned together. Damn, man. So that's, um, this is resin handmade, hand painted. Uh, Chris, was that one that they produced? Did that one ever come out? No, this one, oh, this one wow. didn't come out. This is, this is likely the one that was used for the catalog photography, although I can't match it exactly because the pictures are too small. Um, with him, I've got his, his spell book. Oh, man. Pretty freaking awesome. Oh, and man. also his staff, which is really cool. Yeah. It's like hand over the, That's the sick. wall. And then also, this is the original sculpt for the staff. So this is wax oh on, on top of like a, a, this, a plastic rod inside of this. And then wow, dude, the sculpt for the book. Got to be careful with these because they're the sculpts are very fragile. And then one other thing, which I ha have in the book, but you really can't tell in the book. There is. So if you, if you read it, you'll realize that there's two stages to, to, um, sculpting usually they do a clay first which is really rough and then they cast that and shoot that mold in wax and then they put all the details into the wax well this is the clay book for um the figure wow. but you can see how much smaller it was than i about said what was produced but it wasn't neither of these were produced but and i like this one you probably can't see it very well but on the back it has like splinters face and the, the regular yeah. book just says binding Incredible. the back. So, uh, yeah, I think this guy's this guy's probably my favorite of all the figures. I just, I mean, blue's my favorite color, too. So, I love the blue. I've always been kind of partial to Splinter as well. And just the dynamic nature of the sculpt is just amazing. So, there's my uh, pick. So cool, man. I'll, and I'll tell you yeah. right now, go, going through that book and seeing the Forgotten Sewer subline was the coolest thing for me. That's, that's really my, one of my favorite sections, that whole, that whole subsection.